Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Precious Mulepo back with another video. And as you can see by the title, I am interviewing Notando Koza. She has been on my channel before. Um, she was previously speaking about how to pass accounting in CTA. And now girl has leveled up. She's now giving advice on articles in banking. Hi, Notando. Hi, how are you? I'm good in you. Thank you so much for agreeing to this. I know you're schedule is crazy uh, not too bad but i'll take any time of my day to help somebody else just to make uh, sure that people have um are informed about their articles i think there's not much uh, around about banking um so happy to help oh that is so nice of you thank you so much um for those of you who don't know notando and i went to university together I think I said this in the other video as well, but she was the focus girl that was taking notes during lectures, <laughs> intensive notes. Like she didn't meet, she didn't miss a lecture. I don't actually think you missed a lecture. Every single no. lecture I was at, you were at. Um, but I know that I wasn't at every lecture, so I'm I'm pretty sure that you didn't miss a lecture. Um, but yeah, let's jump into the questions. Interrupting your listening to let you know that this video is sponsored by Gap Learning. I am happy to launch my educational platform that will allow fellow aspiring chartered accountants to access free educational content, raise questions about topics they struggle with as comments under posts, and answer any other person's questions, as well as book coaching sessions with myself or one of my tutors. So do check out gaplearning.co.za to access all of these. Gap Learning is also on Instagram for you to access educational summaries on the go and to drop your pressing accounting science related questions in the comments of posts. Lastly, if you are interested in becoming a Gap Learning tutor, drop me an email on info at gaplearning.co.za. Now back to your listening. So like you mentioned, you're right, there isn't much information about doing your articles in banking. So I can't even imagine what that looks like. But before we get into what that looks like, I just want to ask what are the requirements to get into banking articles, at least um, from what you know? Um, so the articles requirement as, are the same as all other training offices, I think. Um, so for me, for our uh, training program, you just need to pass CTA. So that's the only requirement that you need. Um, pass CTA and do CTA in one year, basically. So I think it, should, it is the same as audit firms as well, right? It's not complicated because it's banking, it's the same. Um, mm. uh, yeah. What do you mean by do your articles in one year? Like you can't fail? Sorry, sorry, I, mean, I mean, if you do your CTA in one year, like, yes. If you fail, you automatically disqualified from doing your articles at, in banking. So if you get your contract, remember you get your contract before you even get your CTA results, right? Yes. So... Unlike an audit where even if you fail, your contract gets roll rolled over to the next year, in banking it doesn't work like that. So if they award you a contract and you fail, they, they um, cancel the contract and you have to reapply again the following year. I means to get into the banking training program, it's the same as the, in the audit firms, you just need to pass CTA. That's the prerequisite of getting into the training program. Interesting. I always thought that you had to get like what sixty five percent, or is that of your third year? Uh, yes, I think apply. there is. Yeah, I think there is a requirement to pass, but I don't think it's that um, important. I don't want to say not important because that's like sort of misleading. Obviously, you need to pass with good grades, but the first and foremost requirement that's very important is you um, actually getting your CTA. Understood. So just to clarify, so let's say I am in third year of BAC. Um, I need to get really good grades to be able to apply to be considered. And then my CTA, I just need to pass yes, for the contract to continue. Yes, you need to pass to get to the, uh, to, you need to pass to get the training contract, basically. And then what made you, because I know there was a point in time where you were signed with an audit firm. Yeah. But then you, you switched and went into banking. So I'm just curious, and why did you choose to switch and go into banking from audit? Um, I think for me, it was the fact that I always knew that even after articles, I wanted to be in the financial services industry. So 
um, one way to go around is just to do your articles in banking or just do your articles in audit and come back to banking. So I was privileged enough to be awarded the opportunity to go straight into the financial industry. And um, so, yeah, so basically it was about where I want to be after articles. So I think that was the very important part of my decision. Where do I see myself after the three years? If it was an audit, then I was going to go through with audit. Um, but for me, it was mainly that I want to go into banking, into the financial services industry. So I think it made it easier. And I think the other thing was I I didn't have like a good relationship with audit, especially in CTA. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad. I think that also um, it contributed mostly to my decision of saying, okay, from these four modules that I'm doing, which one is my strongest point in career-wise? Which one would I want to do after my articles? And that's how I decided. So what you were looking at, how you were performing in finance compared to auditing and that kind of helped yes, you decide. Yes, and, and basically career-wise, right? So in CTA, or like basically when you get onto the accounting stream, you sort of know where, which path you want to take, right? Whether you want to be a CA that's an auditor or you want to be a CA in the financial services industry or in insurance or whichever industry you want to be in. So mm. for, for me, it was basically the starting point of, okay, where do you want to do your articles? Firstly, what would you want to do after your articles? Right. So mm. I think a lot of people can get, um, basically can have their decisions very easily if they start asking themselves those type of questions, like be realistic, what do you want to do after articles? Um, are you, do you see yourself doing that type of job like in the next three, five years, I guess? Um, and then, yeah, that will sort of help you decide where you do your articles. And I know a lot of people go into audit because not a lot of um, people get into the banking, but it's still not a chain smash. But if you get the opportunity mm -hmm. to go straight to, where you'd want to end up, I think just grab it. I think that's what I basically did. How does one apply to do the articles in a bank? How did you apply? Um, so I know most most of the banks do come to a career site. So I encourage like a lot of the guys to go to the career sites for and ask as much as as much questions as possible. But how I did it was just to go onto that particular bank's site. Um, under careers, I think it's the same format to lay out for all banks, if I'm not mistaken. You just go onto the website, um, go under careers, and then under careers, there would be <clears throat> uh, an option for internships and learnerships, I think. And then you search basically for the training program. For uh, What I did was just to search for the CA training program, and then there was like a whole introduction about the program in a video of somebody explaining what it is, and then a link to apply. Yeah, okay, that seems how pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah, but the, I think the easiest way is during career first, just go onto the tables where the banks are. They usually give out the pamphlets or uh, information on how to apply, or they put you on your on, on their database and send you an email, which I think would be the quickest way to get information other than going and searching on the site. Can you talk us through from this time you applied to congratulations we're pleased to inform you how many interview processes how the interview was etc um if i remember correctly we had i can't just i can't remember if it was three or four interview rounds but it was more than two um the first one obviously you start by applying and hope for the best <laughs> and then um <laughs> the first the first interview was um a telephonic interview I remember it was a lady and then she asked me um, what are the differences between like what do you think that is the difference between IS39 and IFRS9 and I was like okay um, uh, and then I answered but we the first interview was telephonic obviously it was like about yourself a bit about yourself in that one technical question and the second round of interviews was with the panel and other candidates um so okay so just just to jump in there yes. what is the difference between is 39 and if 9 i'm i'm stuck now thinking about weight so if 9 is financial instruments but is 39 yes. 
it's also a financial instrument, but remember they, they I can't just remember correctly now, but they, previously there was just one standard for financial instruments. And then now I think I still nice the uh, disclosure they I might need to confirm, but then uh, this nine is the newer standard. Oh yes, okay. So I also remember IS thirty nine. I think had like the identifying yes. the financial asset and liabilities, and the first nine had um, the let's say uh, recognizing an impairment, etc. Yes. Okay, so, so did they yeah. give you a heads up uh, that they're going to be asking you technical questions or were you no. caught off guard? <laughs> no. no, no heads up. And even if they give you a heads up about asking you technical questions, you wouldn't know which technical question they would ask you, right? So I think at the time I was prepared because obviously I was doing CTA and I had to know it, this stuff in detail. But that's one technical question that they asked me in the first round, which was telephonic. Um, in the second round, it was a group interview with the other candidates and the the panel. So technically, definitely, what what happened there was uh, that there was group exercises, um, and at the end of those group exercises and um, discussions with the panel, we had to go into breakaway rooms where you had one on one interviews with the panel, right? And then the third round, I think, if it wasn't um, with the second round, if I remember correctly, was a presentation. So we were given a topic, I forgot what topic it was, to present to the panel. So each person had to present. And then they Ooh. made their decision from there. Jeez, yeah, that so. seems so intense. Was this like on the same day? Uh, no. So the group interview and the and the presentation, I think, was on the same day, if it's not two separate days. But, I, oh, yeah, it's two separate days. So there's one telephonic on one day, and the, the next two days, it was just the group interview and the presentation. Do you think you know, now that you're done with your banking articles, the reason that they have such a strict um, interview process? Um, I think it's because, remember, in each organization has different values, right, that drive what they do. So the reason now that I, when I look back at the reason why we had, like, the group interviews and, like, interactions with other candidates is what the panel was trying to see was, are you able to work with other people? Because during those um, interviews with the other candidates, there was also a... Um, an exercise, a group exercise, where they wanted to specifically see if you are able to work with other people and you are able to problem solve, right? Are you able to reach a decision? Because that's basically what we um, we needed to do. Looking at this problem, a problem as, a, as a group, what's your final answer and why? Right? So I think what um, people need to know is that there isn't just an exercise for nothing. There's something that drives that exercise. Like, I want to see, are you able to work with other people? How well are you able to work with other people? Are you able to receive feedback? And are you able to reach a decision by yourself? So I think mm -hmm. that's it, yeah. And then the interview with the panelists, the one-on-ones. Yes. Do you remember any of the interview questions they asked? Maybe give us one, two examples if you can. Um, so it what the one on ones were mostly was like the personal um, interview questions like tell me about yourself, uh, what made you want to go into banking, I have an audit, um, and then from the presentation there was more technical questions. I remember mine was about the free cash flow. Why do I think the free cash flow is a superior method than the other ones um, that I used to value wow. on valuations? Yeah. That's mostly, but I think what I can say is that when going into banking, just have that expectation that you're going to be asked technical question. It's like a financial services industry. There would always be something around if it's nine, interest rates, um, basal, if it may, um, basic mm -hmm. accounting and finance. So the would you would expect to get technical questions when you're interviewing for a banking role for articles. And then looking back at your interview, what do you think made you get the job? I think 
Um, it's the fact that I had I had researched the bank quite well, and I went in there already knowing that these are the characters that you need to display for to get like a job. You have to be able to work with other people. This is at the back of me going to do the research about the company and what they basically are looking for and what are their values. Because remember, when you apply to an organization, you want to be um, a, as a good fit as possible and value people who work in teams. You want to display that character. If they say you value people who take on other people's opinions with respect, you want to display that character and so on and so forth, right? So I think for me, it was that I had known that, okay, these are the qualities that I need to display. And that's what I did throughout the whole interview process. I was able to basically answer, put my hand up there to ask questions, answer the questions, um, work well together with other candidates to solve on a prog- problem. And I was also able to um, present the t- topic that we were given and answer the questions following those presentations. So I think mostly it was um, knowing what interviewers are looking for and displaying that, in that during the interview process. It's amazing. Well done. Well done on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think already there's this I there's this perception that banking articles are like the hardest articles to get into. So already like I imagine the interview process to be so intense, the panelists to be so serious, but you've you've really broken it down and shown how you can um prepare yourself for the interview, which is great. The hard just just to add, it's not like it's hard to get in there. I think the narrative is based off the fact that in banking they don't take a lot of people in the whole of like in the country. Basically, you're competing with everyone who's done with their CTA by they only taking like a few number of people. So it's not like the interviews are hard or that the panel is very serious. It's just the fact that they take a limited number of people. You know how many people your the the bank you did your articles at? Do you know how many people was there like a set number of people they would take each year or would it vary? Um so when I joined we were eleven and I think now the max is at fifteen. Yeah. Audits, I think they take like 200 and something, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And that is only like at a, a specific branch, like let's say uh, an audit firm in Joburg downtown, they'll take two, two, 225 and then a Cape Town one would take, according to the size of the building, but definitely more than 11. Okay, mm-hmm. so I hear where, where you're coming from. Yeah, I think it's not that the interview process is difficult. It's just the fact that they just take a small number of people um, to do yeah. the articles per year. Yeah. yeah. Typical day in banking articles look like. So what would your nine to five routine be like? So now we've covered the interview process. Now it's just like the mm-hmm. everyday. This will depend on the area or the rotation, as we call them, that you're in. Um, so just to also mention Um, The reason why they take a small number of people, I think, is because there's more focus on, like, the trainee. Because I remember in most of my rotation, I was the only trainee there, right? So I think that's Mm -hmm. what they do mostly. And what you do in, like, a nine-to-five day is basically dependent on the area that you're in. And in banking, there's a lot of areas. There's audit, internal audit. There is taxation. There is reporting. There's global market, there's investment banking. So what you do will be informed by where you are. But just to make an example, um, one of my rotations was taxation, right? So my tasks were just to do my the income tax tax for the subsidiaries that the bank owns, uh, make sure that the provisional tax are calculated and submitted to SARS, and just also communicated with the FM to, to, to ensure that the payment is made on time. Um, calculations of like shortfall taxes, deferred taxes, and all of that. So your nine to five depend on whether whatever task that they gave you are they done? Do you need more work, or do you need to still finish up whatever that they gave you the previous day or the previous week? Right. So it is basically, in summary, dependent on where you are because there's different areas in the bank. You made an example that you would calculate the provisional tax of a subsidiary. Um, would you have like support from your management? Because that sounds pretty complex. I think most of the time, the the first weeks of 
you in a, in a particular area you get taught what they do how they do it where everything sits and who you need to speak to and in all of my rotations i have been taught for like the first month or two and then they let me run with it so you sort of like do the work as if like some people even forget that you're a trainee and you have to leave up a specific period that's how much <laughs> you get into the work and get involved um when doing the task so you do get uh support from your manager so you obviously you have somebody has to review your work because at the end of the day if there's mistakes somebody has to account right so to just avoid the whole of mistakes and all of that when you do your work you submit to your manager they review and then you run with it but most of the time you run with the tasks if they gave you something if you know that you are responsible for doing something you run with that basically teaching you independence in the work area interesting and then were you like could you message your manager or teams i don't know what platform you guys used but can you communicate with your manager if you face any issues at any time is it that open yes very open um i think they encourage that mostly to just fast track the learning the learning process right so for you to learn faster obviously you need to ask questions so if people are not available to answer you that delays your learning process and that delays the tasks itself and the submission so yeah all the time all my managers were always available whether on teams on calls if they were not on their in their desk i could message them on whatsapp as well so yeah the com- communication was very it's very encouraged in our training program and then what happens if you miss a deadline so it is your duty as a trainee to know what to do when you are given a task that has a deadline right and obviously it you doesn't just okay on the day that oh i needed to submit this this other day or i won't be able to submit this today right so you when you complete a task you get to see that okay there's a lot of information that i'm still missing so one of the things that they teach us as trainees to do is to communicate it's very very important to speak to your managers to say look i don't think we're going to be able to finish this let's just push it or let the other people know that you'll be pushing this right so there was never any instance of me missing a deadline without knowing that I'd miss a deadline or without communicating so the communication part is very key when you're doing your articles wherever you're doing your articles um specifically so you have to let your managers know where you are with your work so that they know and know how to manage expectations as well because it is it looks very unprofessional and irresponsible for you to come the day after and say oh i didn't have this this and that because you knew maybe a week earlier or two weeks earlier, uh two days before that you wouldn't be able to meet this right so mm. i in particular never met missed a deadline without knowing that or miss it or without communicating and um making plans to push it forward is there any dress code you had to adhere to yeah so it depends also so you you'll hear me <laughs> say a lot of it depends uh with the banking mm-hmm. uh, space because there's a lot of areas and each area has its own rules and how they expect their people to re- to to um like uh, to to follow certain rules right so it depends on this question as well um whether mm-hmm. you're in which area so for an example if you're in in ib investment banking is very client facing so you would obviously need to wear formal clothes wherever you whenever you're in um the office other than your other roles where they are a bit up in the back office uh, they wouldn't mind if you wear semi formal or on fridays just wear your casual but it depends on where you are in the bank And then did you guys follow like a hybrid working uh, uh, location? Like did you yes. work both from home and office? Yeah, so when I joined, I joined during COVID. So first year of my articles I was in I was at home. And then the uh, first year and half second year I think. And then um thereafter it was a requirement by the bank as well to work I think two days or three days per week at the office and the rest at home but also it depends on the area that you're in <laughs> if, if if the area is front office like ib obviously there there is a more need to be at the office than at home the other than in your regular finance roles where you can decide as a team that okay two days is enough for us to come in 
or we can just come in during our month and processes only and or not come in the rest of the month, right? So it depends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then are there any international opportunities? Because I know a lot of people go into audit because there is a branch in another country that they can always transfer to, or there's an audit firm in another country. Commonly, United Kingdom lately, a lot mm-hmm. of people are mm-hmm. I've uh, seen a lot of immigrating. UK. There. <laughs> I've seen a lot yeah. of UK posts, yes. So is there that opportunity in banking to transfer internationally or to apply to, to go work in another country? I think it depends on the bank as well. So in our one, we have branches in international, in other countries as well. So I know there has been other trainings that go and rotate in those countries, out of the country. So yes, because there is a branch outside of the country, you get an opportunity to also apply if there's an, is a vacancy there. So it, this also depends on the bank, which goes into, um, goes back to research. If somebody wants to, go on to banking, but also is interested in, in international posts, it's very important to just check whether that bank has other branches or has plans to open other branches in, in other countries. So for us, yes, there okay. is an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Do you think you'll ever take that step and uh, relocate? Ah, uh, Not now. Not that I'm happy with load <laughs> shedding, <laughs> but I think I just want to gather as much experience as possible before I decide to move. Yeah, I think okay. for now I'm still, I'm, I'm fine with South Africa. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, South Africa is making it difficult, I won't lie. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying on LinkedIn, you're seeing so many people that are relocating. Almost every, I think every second or third um, newly qualified CA or eligible to register CA yeah. um, is is leaving the country. So it's becoming more and more common. Yeah, um, look, okay, so that's a good a very point. tough decision, hey? Um, it's, you, there's a lot of things that you have to look into before you make the big move. I don't think I have got into the stage as yet. <laughs> so that's why I'm just <laughs> keeping it on the cards, just gathering my experience for now, and then we'll see what the future holds. And then do you know if you can transfer into another bank other than the one that you did your articles in overseas? Um, do you mean after articles or during or articles? After articles. So no, you can. Over. After articles, remember you are now you're qualified CA, you a candidate like all other candidates that are looking for a job. So you can um, go look for a job anywhere else you want. Mm. You mentioned that the, another avenue to get into banking, I know it's not in articles, but after, from audit, is yes. that possible? Like, can you get yes. into banking from audit? Yep, definitely possible. Um, just apply and you'll get, I know a lot of people that are currently in the bank as well that did the articles in audit. So it is possible. It's not like you won't ever, ever, ever work in banking if you do articles in audit. It is very much possible. And then do you know if you're required to be in the financial services sector in order to get into banking or is that irrelevant? I am not sure, but I would assume that that would not be an applicable factor because remember you do your articles, our competences, well, on the old program, our competences were based on all uh, modules that we did, your tax, your financial, your risk, your governance and audit, right? So it's not like you mm. only did audit competences, right, that will uh, make you in not qualify. So I don't think that that is relevant. But I could be okay, wrong. Then, yeah, but I don't, I don't see it as being relevant if I think about it. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. And then just on that note, um, can you give us some job titles that you can get once you're newly qualified CA and you're working or you're looking for a position in a bank, what exactly do I go and search? Do I search bank teller? Like, I wouldn't know when, where to start. So it depends also what you want to do. So the the bank is very big. I didn't know this before I joined the bank to do my articles. I didn't know that I could go on to be an analyst if I want. Or I could go on to be a manager in group reporting or in any reporting space. Or I could go on and be a trader for global market. So 
if you know which space you want to end up to end up in, that's search for that specific thing. If you want to be in finance, search for finance roles and you would get like a list of roles that you could end up potentially end up in. So it's, it's a lot of it depends. Um, if you want to be in global markets, you'd like the the markets, search roles available for global markets in like specific bank and then just go through that. You'll see uh, roles that are available. And I know that mostly investment banking, um, you get on as an analyst. So if you will see yourself in investment banking, just search analyst roles available in investment banking in a particular bank, you'll get to see which roles are available. Okay, you mentioned you did one of your rotations in investment banking, right? Yes, yes. Why didn't you choose to go the analyst route and get into investment banking post articles? So one of the best things that I like, like I didn't mention this, one of the best things that I like about doing my articles as a bank is that it exposed me to different areas or different things that I could do as a CA. Like I've been to tax, I've been to IB, like you're saying, I was in the valuation space in, in, in corporate finance and solutions for South Africa. I've been to corporate development, which is the... M&A for the bank internally. I've been to um, financial controls, also mostly like audit, but it's a financial control mm-hmm. for the bank. So all those areas um, gave me pros- uh, a perspective of what they do, right? And then from all of the areas that I've rotated in, I said, okay, this is basically what I would, this is what I was interested in mostly. So the exposure allowed me to get to that point to say, from all the things that I've done in my three years at this bank, I am mostly interested in this, right? So for me, I be it's front office. I don't like being in front office. It's very, very, very fast paced. Um, I don't like that type of working environment. So you see, the rotations informed and the rotation and experience and exposure informed my decision on what. I want to do basically how I want my career to go to 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 pan out. So mm, yeah. That yeah. that's a very nice opportunity. That sounds yes. so interesting. <laughs> so I'm guessing your articles met your expectations then. Yes, they did. Um exposure wise very well. Um the people it's very great and yeah, basically they met all my expectations. Last question. I'm sure this is on everybody's mind, but um, I'm not going to ask you how much uh, trainees make in banking. I feel like if you search it, you you can find it on the internet. So let's not get into that. But I do want to ask you um, whether it was enough. So already I know banking uh, pays the highest mm-hmm. amount of money compared to all the other areas that you can do your articles at. So did you feel that it was enough? Did you feel that you could set yourself up apartment-wise, car-wise, um, or did you, like the order trainees, face at some point financial constraints? Um, I think for me, I felt like it was enough. Um, I think more, more, one of the most um, good things that I did for myself was just to understand my financial decision, my financial, uh, basically my financial uh, state where I was. As a first year, what can I afford and what can't I afford? Where can I afford to stay? Where can I not afford to stay, right? So based off what... That is so important. (laughs) Yes. So I think that's what most people don't realize, that you need to understand your financial state. And based off that, just make good financial decisions. It doesn't hurt to go stay at the bedroom, wherever, for that year until you get enough money, right? So um, for me, it was enough because I was able to live on that and also send some money home. So, yeah, it was very, very oh, enough that's for me. amazing. Yeah, and I think okay, what so you also basically is that... emphasizing living within your means? Yes, 100%. We always, <laughs> always, always, even... After articles, when you start working and you get your CA salary, always, always. <laughs> Say that again. Literally, not, people at do, work, as soon as that CSA salary clocks in, it's a yeah, BMW, don't go it's a Mercedes commit, Benz. <laughs> yeah, don't go and now commit to things you can't afford. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, just live within your means. Remember, 
as the finance person, you have to be the smart one in the room. Just know that, okay, I can't afford that. And then what was your, what helped your assessment of can you afford or not? Was it a financial one or or what, what made you decide, okay, this I can afford, this I can't afford? So obviously, it's a very simple income versus expenses exercise. What are you okay. already paying for? <laughs> So what do you need to pay for on a monthly basis? Do you even have enough to save? Because remember, guys, your articles are three years. So what I did um, that really helped me is that after your articles, you know, most of the time you're not guaranteed a job, right? So what you mm. want to do is have like a percentage from that amount to save for that after article year in case you don't get a job. And in, if you mm. don't get a job and you don't have an option to go back home, Right. So your analysis is, okay, this is how much I get, I'm get. i getting paid. After taxes, not before taxes, after mm-hmm. taxes. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, this is how much I need to save on a monthly. Uh, and it's also important to mention that you won't always be able to save every month, but make it a point, try as much as possible to save. And then how much do I need to pay um, to to pay for expenses every month and do I have something left if every time you're on a bank overdraft then you should know that there's something that you're doing wrong or there's some way you're overspending so it's, mm-hmm. it's it's a very simple exercise sit down with your excel type down your numbers just know what you need to pay for how much you're getting and what you're left with if you have anything left Definitely. That was amazing. I might actually have you back for some financial advice <laughs> when it comes to living off your, your income as a trainee. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I'll just use that end part. But thank you so much. That was so insightful, Notando. Thank you. Thank you so um, much for having me as well. Do you have any social media handles? Maybe people can follow you. I know people, my subscribers like DMing and asking questions via the DMs if they don't want to drop the questions in the comments. Are you on Instagram by any chance? Not yet. I am trying to sort it out uh, because maybe I don't know <laughs> what to post. Why would I post? <laughs> but I am on LinkedIn. I am not Hando Cosa on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. Otherwise, okay, you can, anyone who needs, who needs like advice on city or articles or anything like that, you can also give them my number, but you can find me first and foremost on LinkedIn. Okay, otherwise, I don't want to now uh, uh, give out your number. Let's mm-hmm. say post them in the comments. And then if there's any com- questions directed to you, I'll send yes, them to you. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll send you. And check then. Them out. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Natando. Thank you guys for listening to this episode. Um, Let me know if you have any questions. Like I mentioned, drop them in the comments below. Um, Until the next video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye, everybody. interrupting your listening to let you know that this video is sponsored by Gap Learning. I am happy to launch my educational platform that will allow fellow aspiring chartered accountants to access free educational content, raise questions about topics they struggle with as comments under posts, and answer any other person's questions, as well as book coaching sessions with myself or one of my tutors. So do check out gaplearning.co.za to access all of these. Gap Learning is also on Instagram for you to access educational summaries on the go and to drop your pressing accounting science related questions in the comments of posts. Lastly, if you are interested in becoming a Gap Learning tutor, drop me an email on info at gaplearning.co.za. Now back to your listening.